I mean, I think we could all sit here and say, with England, when we played for England, and it's the same at club level, until you get past your 10, 15, 20 appearances for a football club, you don't feel like a, a member of the squad even properly. You don't feel like an integral member of that squad, let alone the team. You need games, you need back-to-back -back kind of opportunities to go in and play, and then you can earn that, that right to be in a team and a responsibility from your other teammates. Some young players don't understand the standards needed. Yeah. Mm. They step over to the dressing room, they've done well in the youth team or reserves, whatever it is, and all of a sudden they don't clock on quick enough. Some do later on, some do straight away maybe, but a lot of players don't get that standard. Hard work, focus, in the game, how you live your life, what you do, they don't quite get it. I remember saying to you actually, when we first started working together two or three years ago, I said, at United, what did Sir Alex say so that when players arrived they knew the levels, the expectation? And you said, well, he said nothing. Mm. So no. what, he said nothing, isn't it? Because it was up to us. Yeah, we were yeah. their teammates. We told them what's expected. Yeah, oh, you don't necessarily have to tell them. They see. Mm. Day to day, who's in first? Who's in the gym doing their pre, pre-training activities? Who's doing the, the yoga? Who's doing the, the gym? So who's out on the training pitch till, till the last person in? Who's doing extras on weak parts of their games? Strikers staying out for an extra hour outside, honing their skills. Frank done it for years. You'd see Frank doing his shooting day in, day out, more than some strikers. And I'd sit there and watch some strikers walk in and think, how can a midfielder be doing more sh shots at goal than you on a daily basis with the intensity? And it's all right going out there and doing training sessions. Right, you're going to work on your shooting and doing it. Take a touch, have a look, take a touch and shoot. It's intensity with England, with, 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 uh, with Chelsea, with West Ham growing up. You have to make it match related, match pace, get the ball, touch, bang. So it becomes, when you come outside there on the pitch, it's natural, you've been there, you've seen it, it's repetitive, it's in your mind, it's in your system. So where did you get it from, you? Uh, probably within, I mean, the fortunate thing I was a footballing dad, so he sort of rammed it into me at a very young age, so I had no yeah, choice. Yeah, he, he used to ram it into him, don't <laughs> worry about that. He, just, he, he let you know, did he? Yeah. <laughs> do you think I wanted hard. to stay out and do like, long runs? And, <laughs> 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 no interest, but I mean, he did, but you know, as I say, I was fortunate, but everyone's different. Rio didn't have that, and Rio was a converted number 10, pretty boy, fancy boy, <laughs> became a centre half, and didn't really want to head the ball. He used to head 50 balls in training and get, uh, was it Roger Cross or whoever? Roger Cross, Frank Burrows. Yeah, volley the ball up to Rio on a cold day and he's heading it and he's heading it. And then throughout his career, he's, he's heading everything. And that's the difference. That's what makes players or, or, or doesn't make a player if you, if you don't make those sacrifices. What about you? When did you realise actually how hard you need to work? Well, you know, I, I was fortunate um, to play for Liverpool in the in the 1990 area when when they just won the league so i was training 16 17 18 year olds with the best players around at the time mm -hmm. and as frank says as soon as you join in a training session with them and you're slower than them and you have too many touches and you get caught and five or six of them are barking at you pass the ball quicker and the coaches are barking at you you know then you have to keep on working hard and improving and being quicker and being more focused and having the confidence to do things otherwise they've called you over or you're with them training because they know how well you've been doing at, at a younger level. So they know they've got ability. It's just whether you can step up. And at that, the, the, you know, that, that level now is really difficult. Mm. But you just have to keep on, keep on working hard. We, we keep on saying it all the time, work hard, work hard. Yes, everybody was blessed with lots of talent. But the hard work behind the scenes, no matter what we say you know, off camera or you know, we have a laugh and a joke, when we were training, you know, it was 100% committed and 100% hard work and focused and trying to be the best and trying to be better than, than the teammates who were slightly in front of it. All right, I have to, do, I have to work harder if I'm going to jump in with him. And then when you get your, your opportunity to play, level of consistency again. I think it's also about the mentality. When you go over to the first team dressing room, you go over to the first team pitch, it's mentality. Are you strong enough mentally to handle it? And you get tests. You get. Te I remember we used to go. We used to get called over. We was on the tr same training pitch uh, area as the first team, the youth team. Injury or someone doesn't turn up, they'd call us over. And I remember hearing Julian Dix on a number of occasions saying about certain young players, "Send him back. He ain't good enough." <laughs> and, then That's not like and, yeah, and, you see, and all of a sudden, you look at that player. Yeah, yeah. Some shrink and never, uh, never to be seen again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But some say, "Pardon, give me the ball." I'll, I'll show you, do you know what I mean? And, it, and that's what it's about, is there's, there's tests along the way. Who's mentally strong enough? Who's got the foundations built to go up and stay? Does that ring bells? The Dixie, yeah. I used to think <laughs> the boots he used to frown back at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> enough, yeah. oh, I'm scared of him. But you've all, you've all, we've all been heavily criticised in, in our careers as well at times. And again, it's how you... If you're in a team and you're one of the star men, you'll get criticised more than a lesser known left back or the lesser known right back or something if you're one of the star men who has to perform at a consistent level and it's how you respond off the back of that as well 
you know, when every when you're going through a bad patch, you have to be up here. You have to be switched on and think, you know what? I'm not going to hide today. I'm still going to demand that ball. I'm going to still try that thing. And if I get a groan off the crowd, you know what? I have to go through it again and battle through it until you start getting it right again. And then you'll come round, and then the confidence will return. And as Rio says, many a player. Just you see them shrinking at times on the pitch when the crowd goes. Mm. You don't want the ball, the hide, and the turning away. We saw it at West Ham a couple of weeks ago when they played Liverpool. Oh, I don't want it. I'm I'm yeah. looking over here and running over here, and it's how you respond because everybody knows it. You can see it what they do now. Talking of West Ham, we've discussed this with you about coming through at West Ham and getting really badly criticised from the fans. Do you look back now? And think that actually that was quite an important part yeah. in your career because that absolutely yeah. gave you some sort of inner steel that you carried with you all the way to those yeah. titles. Yeah, without a doubt. It was character building. And it was quite extreme for me at the time. And I actually had was upset about it for a number of years. So, and I shouldn't have been really because as yeah. I got older, I realised it was just part of, of the making of, of me mentally to deal with that sort of stuff. How hard was it? Uh, it was hard at the time. It was very hard because I was young and I, I mm. felt... You know, I, I thought I didn't deserve it, which you can feel even when you're old. But where I was young, I couldn't handle it, so I, I used to get a bit emotional about it. I never hid. That's the thing. I mean, I, I would, I was obviously there at that time, and even as players, you think that's a bit harsh. Why are you doing that? What's the reason behind it? But uh, one thing I would say, and if young players do are listening, is that criticism from fans, from some people within the club, Frank never hid. He always went out there, took on the shots when they when they came, uh, the opportunities came up took on the difficult pass, pass forward, mm. went out there with his chest out to actually prove people. And I think he probably used it as fuel yeah. to make them strides foot forward. And sometimes you become bit with stuff like that. You get a bit bitter and you think, right, but that's a, a stimulant yeah. to prove them wrong. And then when you do prove them wrong, you're not going to shout about it, but inside you know you've shut a lot of people up. And the same people who called you all every name under the sun are suddenly saying you're the greatest person around. And that's, what, that's exactly yeah. what happens in football, doesn't it? Yeah. But you just—I mean, you were just a, a guy that grew up loving West Ham and wanting to play in the first team. Yeah, it's... Tony Cotty was my hero growing up. He used to stand in the tunnel because of my dad, and I could watch him all run, walk past. So I wanted to play for West Ham. But sometimes fans are like that with local yeah. players. Did you understand it, or were you, or did you just completely not understand what was going on at the uh, time? No, I, un I understood uh, the nepotism idea that my dad was a coach and my uncle was a manager. So I, just, I can understand some bloke mm. uh, feeling that that's playing a part. Um, and, but I wasn't that confident in myself as a player. Like we talk about feeling like I'm, I'm all, at 25 at Chelsea, I wouldn't have cared what yeah, they yeah. would have said. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But at 17, 18, trying to establish myself, giving it away, getting done sometimes when I shouldn't have done, and then getting that on top, that's what made it difficult for me. And I did feel like hiding sometimes. Mm. And maybe I did occasionally. I don't know. I, you know, I got through it though, but it's uh, part of the process. But the young kids now have got a different medium to be criticised by, that's social media. Yeah. It, it can be even more difficult now for them because they're getting it direct into their own social feeds yeah, that true. they can look at themselves. So in terms of character building, thick skin, being able to look at criticism and get beyond it, I think it maybe could even be harder now for this generation. Yeah. Yeah.